Good morning. A common question that I have received in the succulent and cactus plot at the demonstration of garden is how do you tell the difference between an aloe and an agave plant, which look very related. Well, today I'll give you a couple tips that will help in your garden. The two plants that I'll be highlighting today in terms of comparing similarities or not will be this aloe maculata. Aloe and the mac is the genus name, maculata, really just referring to the fact that it's speckled in the leaves. So this is an aloe versus the agave. The agaves are a New World plant. A New World plant is referring to the fact they originated in Mexico, Central America, and Southwestern United States. So the agave is fairly uh, familiar to a lot of us here in California because we come from the Southwestern part of the United States. And these agaves grow fairly wild. Uh, we've hybridized them and they can be commonly seen in a lot of gardens. I would point out they do get large, put them in the back of your garden plots or away from the sidewalks. The aloe that we'll be looking at is considered a old world plant in that they've originated in southern Africa, Madagascar, in that area of the world. They look similar, uh, however, they're not related at all, even though we gardeners put them in a category called succulents, which just refers to how they store water. When you begin your comparison to figure out why do you have an aloe or an agave, the aloe, if we look at the leaf structure, is fairly uh, fleshy if I'm pinching it right now. You, on the leaf margins, you'll notice that it is toothed. However, these are fairly flexible. They're not going to impale you. And on the leaf tips, there will not be a spine. Looking at the agave, it also has a triangular leaf. However, these will get way larger than the aloes. The leaf itself is fairly leathery. I can't squish it with my fingers as I did with the aloe. It also has serrated edges on the margins, but these are very deadly. These I cannot and would not want to try to break off as well as on the agaves, they do have a very sharp pointed leaf tip. After you've done a visual comparison of the leaf structure to see if you're going towards aloe or agave, the next test that you can uh, do in your garden is what we call a snap test. What I'm going to do is, if it's with this aloe, I'm going to break off the tip or the edge of the leaf. As you can see, it broke cleanly and if you can look inside, it's full of this viscous fluid that aloes are known for. In fact, you may have heard of aloe vera, which is what is harvested, that species for this gelatinous inside for sunscreen. Now I'm going to perform that same snap test on the agave. Word of caution, wear leather gloves if you're gonna work near these agaves because of the barbed. So I'm breaking this, however, it's not just snapping. There's a lot of fiber holding it together. In fact, one of the species of agave is sisal, which they make sisal rope from. In addition to using leather gloves, I might also give a couple other tips. One, use something like a hemostat or some tweezers, long tweezers, when you're working with agaves to get inside and clean out the debris, as well as you may want to think about protecting yourself from the tips, putting things like wine corks on the edges while you're going in and working around the leaves. So those are just some tips that I learned the hard way. The next test that you can uh, conduct to see whether it's an aloe or an agave is looking at the flowering pattern. We'll start with the aloe here. The aloe, the genus aloe, they are a summer dormant plant, which means that we are now in early January. They are just now coming alive with the cool weather and the rains here in Central Coast, California. I have an example on my right, an aloe that's already started blooming, as you can see. This is a hybrid. 
the aloe that I have, the maculata, hasn't started blooming yet, but it will. The aloes fall into a category known as polycarpic, which means they will bloom more than once. So every season, they will put out the bloom stalks. Whereas we'll look at a moment with the agaves, once they bloom, they will die. So a long-term test would be to watch seasonally to see has this aloe bloomed more than once? If so, then the odds are it's an aloe. The agaves in comparison fall into a category of called monocarpic, meaning they bloom once and then the mother plant will die. So if you're doing your comparison test, you may wait around 10 to 15 to 20 years before your agave plant is even going to bloom. Well, that's an indication it is an agave. I think that the term, the common term, the century plant has been applied to agaves rather broadly, which means they bloom once every 100 years. However, most agaves will bloom every 10 to 15 years. I was pointing out earlier a characteristic of aloe plants is they have fairly soft teeth or ridges along the leaf margins. Well, this is an exception. This aloe martholii has very deadly teeth on the outside as well as along the margins of the leaf. As you can see also, we talked about aloes coming out of dormancy. This one is getting ready to bloom and I've never seen it bloom before. It was given to me as a gift, hoping it's gonna be a nice, yellow color. If you recall when I was looking at the characteristics of agave is they all have a very sharp deadly point on the tip of the leaf. However, this agave attenuata, an outlier, you can see how flexible it is and I can bend the leaf tips over. Well thanks for joining me today in the comparison of aloes and agaves and how to make that a little easier for you. For more information about succulents or our local Master Gardener program, see the description box below.